Hi Mark 10 kids, it's Miss Lindsay. I'm blessed to be here with you today and I'm excited about our lesson. We're going to talk about some really neat things and talk more about what Jesus did here on earth. Now, I hope you have your Bibles ready. If you're able, you can print out your worksheets and if you're not, that's absolutely okay. We have a really interesting worksheet here today. And if you'll check at the top, the word says rejected. And we're going to talk about how even though Jesus spoke what was good, many people rejected him. Now, if you'll look at this picture, there are some silly items in this picture that do not belong in our Bible picture. They don't belong there. They shouldn't be there. If you'll look at our picture, what do you see that does not belong? You know, the giraffe and the bird should be out in the wild. An Eskimo boy should not be fishing at the top of the temple. A drummer or flute boy? Nope, that's not there either. Cats would not be in the temple and neither would a sign be pointing to Jesus saying he was the Messiah. You know it does belong though? Jesus was in the temple teaching. And also, some people becoming angry. There were angry people at the temple. You know what? This angry man wouldn't have glasses. They didn't have glasses then. But these people were angry at Jesus, and we're going to discuss what happened. And we know that Jesus never sinned. This was a problem in their heart. They weren't listening and they weren't having an open heart to what Jesus was teaching them. So let's go over our big Bible picture questions and then we'll read from our lesson, okay? It's the same picture of Jesus teaching and people being angry. Jesus taught in Nazareth will be in Luke 4. Our story point is that Jesus taught that he was the Messiah. Remember Messiah? It was the person who was told would come and save the world from their sins, would save the people from the bad things they've done. The Messiah. Now, our big picture question is, what makes people special? Why are people special to God? Why are you special to God? Well, People are special because we are all made in God's image. That means similar to Him. We're made to be similar to Him. We're not exactly like Him. We're similar. And as male and female, men and women, boys and girls, we were made to know Him, to be in a good relationship with Him. He wants us to love Him. Our Christ connection is that for hundreds of years before Jesus was born, the prophet Isaiah wrote about God's plan to send the Messiah. The Messiah would bring the good news and would redeem people. He would save people that were broken and hurting. Jesus read Isaiah's words and he announced that he was the Messiah. That's a quick view of what happened. Let's go over it in detail, and then we'll break it apart, okay? So Luke 4, remember our four Gospels? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We'll be in Luke, it's the third book, towards the back. All right, Jesus went to the town of Nazareth, where he had lived as he was a boy. Now Jesus was grown, remember? He started working his ministry for God. He traveled all around teaching people about God. On the Sabbath day, Jesus went to the synagogue in Nazareth. The synagogue was a special building where the Jews met together to pray, to worship, and to learn about the scriptures. Kind of like how we enjoy going to church. Now Jesus stood up to read the scripture. He unrolled the scroll of the prophet Isaiah in red. The Spirit of the Lord is on me. He has chosen me to tell the good news to the poor. He has sent me to tell the captives that they are free 
and to tell the blind that they can see, to free people who have been treated badly, and to announce that the Lord's favor is on us. These were some really good things, and Jesus read it from the scroll, which was the old Bibles. Now, when Jesus rolled up the scroll, he gave it to the attendant, one of the workers, and sat down. Everybody in the synagogue, they stared at Jesus. They knew something was different here. Jesus said, today, as you were listening to me reading these words, they came true. Wow. He was saying that these words written hundreds of years earlier came true today. They kept listening. The people said good things about Jesus. They were amazed at him. They liked this at first. But some of the people in Nazareth who had known Jesus when he was a youth, when he was younger, they said, mm, wait, isn't this Joseph's son? They asked. Basically, they were saying, this is just some normal kid. I knew him as a kid. He's just a normal guy. No, that's not true. Jesus said, no prophet is accepted in his hometown. Jesus told the people about times when God used prophets to help people who were not Jews. He reminded them, this is also in your Bibles, my dears. He reminded them of Elijah and Elisha. When there was a terrible famine in Israel and no rain fell for three and a half years, plenty of widows, that means women whose husbands had died and were poor, in the country, they needed help. But the prophet Elijah did not go help the widows in Israel. Instead, God sent Elijah to help a widow in another land, someone out of Israel, a different country. Now, when Elisha was a prophet, many people in Israel had leprosy. It's a skin disease. Your skin was sick. Now, they wanted to be healed, but Elisha did not heal them. Instead, he healed a man named Naaman, and Naaman was from Syria, a country that actually hated God's people. Jesus was reminding them how other prophets from the Old Testament, God sent those prophets to help people who were not Jews. Jesus reminded them of this. Now, the people became very angry. They were super angry. They were in their church, fuming mad. Oh, they forced Jesus out of town. They wanted to even throw him off a cliff. They wanted to kill Jesus for saying these things. But Jesus walked right through the crowd and he went on his way teaching more people. Oh, dear ones, that is a lot of information. Let's go through it a little bit. Okay, I'll tell you first, we're in the book of Luke, but when Jesus read, he was reading from the Old Testament in Isaiah. Isaiah. It's more towards the center of your Bible in Isaiah. And if you want to read this beautiful part that Jesus read, it's Isaiah 61, 1 and 2. And we'll look at some of the things that Jesus read that he said, today has come true. Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is on me. That is true. Jesus and his Father were together. Jesus always prayed and always did what his Father wanted. Remember, we've gone through that in our cards, how Jesus always wanted to do what was right. He never sinned, and he obeyed his Father. Now, he said that God had chosen him to tell the good news to the poor. That's exactly it. This was the best news. This is the gospel, that Jesus was coming to rescue people from their sins, that he would die 
and he would be raised again. It said that God sent Jesus to tell captives they are free. Yes, Jesus came to break the horrible bonds, the horrible nastiness, the chains of sin. Jesus' death took that away. We don't carry that. A captive means someone who's held tight. They can't get free. But because of Jesus, we are free. To tell the blind that they can see. To free people who were treated badly. You know, Jesus did that. People who couldn't walk, could walk when they were healed by him. He healed people's eyes, ears. He Remember, we talked about how he even took out bad spirits, demons from people. Jesus came to do these things listed in Isaiah. Now, how could Jesus do this? It's because he was God. He was the Son of God. He's fully God and fully human. And we're also talking about why did Jesus want to do this? Because he loves us. Because he is compassionate. Jesus came to save us. And he also cares about our problems because we're special to him. You are special to God. All of your friends and your family and the people you don't know in the world, they're all special to God. God does not lose us. God does not go, oops, I don't know where you went. Were you hiding from your mom and doing something bad? Oh, where did he go? Where is she hiding? Jesus doesn't do that. God knows where you are all the time, and he loves you all the time. He wants us to choose him as Messiah. So if you'll go through and mark out the things that aren't true in this picture, the things that don't belong, and think about how Jesus was saying these wonderful things. But people were not listening. Their hearts were cold and hard. They even tried to kill Jesus before it was his time. Remember, the people became angry when Jesus reminded them of Elijah and Elisha. He reminded them that actually God loves everybody. It would not be just for the Jews. It would be for the people who weren't Jews. They called them Gentiles. Everyone would be able to be part of God's family. And that's a beautiful, wonderful, amazing gift. Remember we talked about Emmanuel means God is with us. Jesus came to die and to be raised again so that he could save all of the world. Not just some of it. Not just an itty bitty group or a certain country, and only the really good people know Jesus came to save sinners. Jesus came to save us. Remember, I, I know y'all like this verse, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever, anybody who believes in him, will not perish, but will have eternal life. You know, God came to save all the people. He wants us to know him and to love him. He wants you to know him and to love him. Now, I want you to remember that as you go through your day, that God loves you and he wants you to be close to him. And tell others. Tell others that you know, your family members and your friends, people on the streets, that Jesus loves them. It is the truth. Now, let's review some of our questions from the lesson. Where did Jesus grow up? Do you remember? He grew up in Nazareth. And that's why some of the people said, you can't be God. I knew you when you were little. Mm -mm. Jesus was God. They just didn't choose to believe him. Do you remember where Jesus read from? Remember? 
Isaiah. You might even know a friend named Isaiah. It's a nice word. It's a nice name. Jesus read from Isaiah, a very old scripture, a very old book of the, of the Old Testament. But all of the promises in the Old Testament, Jesus did. That also proves that he is God. Now, what does it mean to accept Jesus? You know, if we are Christians, that means we accept Jesus. Now, that means we believe he was real. We believe he was a real person. But to make him our Lord and our Savior, that means we also have to believe he was the Son of God. That he never sinned. That he came and he not only died on the cross, but he rose again. That's what we're believing when we accept Jesus. When we choose to become Christians. And we're also saying that I don't get to do only the things I want to do, but I choose to love you. I choose to do what the Bible says. I choose to do what you want me to do. That's what it means. Now, dear ones, what about something really sad? What do you do when someone you love or you like says, no, I don't believe in Jesus. I don't think he's real. You know what, that'll make you very sad. And it might, it might even make you mad. I'm going to tell you, it's okay though. You cannot do anything to make someone change their mind on this. Only God saves. But now, try not to be too sad and try not to be angry. Instead, you can pray. You can pray for people who are choosing not to do what's right. For people who are choosing not to accept Jesus for who he really is. You be kind, you be respectful, don't be rude, but pray for them and pray that God opens their heart, opens their heart to the truth. Because we do want many brothers and sisters, other people, to know that Jesus is good and Jesus is the Lord. He is our Savior. And we will not only have eternal life, remember, we will have eternal life with Jesus in heaven someday, but we can also have a better life here. We can have peace and love and joy here, and we can always talk to God here. So if someone doesn't do that, treat them with respect, treat them with gentleness. And you don't have to argue. If they want to talk about it, talk about it with them. But also remember to pray. Pray for your friends, maybe your family members who don't know Jesus. Because everybody needs Jesus. Everybody. Isn't it great that even though Jesus was rejected by people, he didn't stop working. He didn't stop teaching. You know, Jesus continued to teach and to preach the good news. If you look at this page, this page is all correct. Now, I know in this picture, it shows a lot of grumpy, angry people. But just remember that there were people who loved Jesus. You can always look for the good people. You can look for the people who love Jesus and spend time with them and talk with them, enjoy fellowship with them. That's why we go to church. And I can't wait to go back to church with you. It'll be absolutely wonderful to see your faces and to hear your questions and to talk with you face to face about how marvelous, how wonderful Jesus is. My dear ones, I want you to think about this through the week and just thank Jesus for who he is. Pray to him and enjoy him. And maybe ask Jesus who you need to pray for. You can talk to your parents about this. Who should we pray for? You can ask them if they know anyone who doesn't know who Jesus is. Well, dear ones, I love you so much. And remember that Romans 10, 13 says that everyone, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved.
everyone who calls on the name of the Lord. So, make sure that you know and you love Jesus and spread the good news. And we will pray for those who don't know yet. All right, dear ones, let's pray. Dear Jesus, I pray for these kids that you be with them. Thank you, Lord, that you love them all the time and you made them special. You made them in your image. They are made by your hands. They were made, every single part of them, from their hair to their toes. You made them, Lord, and you have a purpose for them. They are special to you. You never lose them. You never forget them. Lord, I thank you for that. Lord, I pray that you strengthen their heart to hear and to learn the word of God, to get close to you and to talk to you, to pray to you. And Lord, also that you help them pray for others who don't know you. Lord, I pray for our family members, our friends, and our neighbors around us, our friends at school, maybe cousins that need to know the word of God, that need to know the truth. We love you, Jesus. Please take care of us. We look forward to coming back to your church house to be together. Amen. All right, dear ones, I love you so much. Y'all are y'all are very special to me, but to God, you are so special that he gave his son for you. Isn't that marvelous? He loves you so much. Have a good week. Bye.